We live on a ranch, South Central South Dakota, on the northern edge of the Sand Hills. We run about 200 pairs of cows. We're kind of into a rotational grazing program that we move the cattle around from pasture to pasture. We're in a soft grass country. We're on the northern edge of Sand Hills. We're not in a hard grass like they are up north. And our rainfall is like anywhere from 13 to 17 inches normal. It's quite a deal to grow up on a ranch like this that you drive over a hill and you just know the ground so well. Doing the rotational grazing, letting it rest. It's a tool that 20 years ago I never knew existed. You know, this rotational grazing, you know, the mob grazing and stuff. We're very excited about it. I was so excited, I everybody I'd talk to, and I'd try to convince them that you need to look at this, you know, this is really great. You know, you can, eventually you can run more cattle on your land. Your land will actually be better than it was when you're season long grazing. Your grasses are better, cattle's nutrition's needs are, are met a lot better. Like this year, we faced a drought in June and July, and we're still doing good. We still got good grass out there, where before they might be a little bit stressed by now, you know, if we'd have grazed it all down and not let it rest. We're at a point right now where we're gonna come out of the pasture that we're in and um, into the last cell that still has grass that hasn't been grazed this year. And then after that, then we're gonna start rotating in the pastures that have been grazed once, but have regrown. So we've still got reserves, you know, that hopefully will take us into December or January. I guess the biggest thing that I noticed when I first started this was the amount of open soil you could see riding across the grass and looking down and seeing sand or dirt or something. And the thing I've noticed is you just don't see it as much anymore. With the aftergrowth or what you leave the year before it covers the soil up. One of the amazing things that I seen was where we had water that during a big rain that come off of a neighbor's drainage come onto my land and then it hit our soil and it went oh probably 100 yards and it was all dispersed. So we were able to save that moisture into, you know, into our ground that would help our grass get better too. That's the, been the biggest focus that I looked at is trying to just get that ground litter to where, well, number one, it, it'll stop the runoff. Number two, it'll, it'll keep the soil from getting so hot and then evaporate and what moisture you do have in there. I think the fact that we went to a higher nutrition plane overall, you know, year round, has helped our health of our cattle. And every year that we do this, I think we're just gonna see the grass improve to the point where I don't know whether to take them, look at more cattle, or just stay with the amount of cattle we got and just keep them in better nutrition. What I'd like to be able to see in 10 years is when I drive out there is the, you know, this used to be no good grass, you know, maybe 10 years, you know, maybe we can get it to where, you know, just lush. It might be like a pipe dream, but I'd like to get there. It'd be nice to know that when they lay me in my grave that I left this land in better shape than when I got it. <laughs>